another half inch and drop there for good. Yeah. Hey, hurry up for them big. If you got the money to pay, I'll give you a plate of beans. Welcome back to another episode of Dicking Around Outdoors. We finally got great weather here. We set up camp, our first outing of the season, so we're excited about that. We're also excited to show you another awesome recipe in our classic Campfire Cuisine series. And if you recall, that series emphasizes ingredients that don't take up a lot of cooler space or space in your refrigerator. We're also gonna do something today that we haven't tried yet. We're going to use the Pioneer grates that go on the pop-up pit. They're advertised as being Dutch oven friendly. So we're going to try those and see how those work. So stick around, let's get the fire started, and I'll show you what we're cooking. Welcome back to Dickin' Around Outdoors, and for today's classic campfire cuisine, hold your breath, we're going to make the classic beef and bean casserole. Before we get started, take a second to punch the little subscribe button down here in the corner. We've got the fire going. Let's take a look at the ingredients we're going to use today. So for today's classic beef and bean casserole, we're going to use lean hamburger, green pepper, hatch of green chilies, baked beans, brown sugar with Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, celery, an onion, and dry mustard. Now out of all those ingredients, the only one that really needs to be refrigerated is the hamburger. And we're gonna cook it all up today in a 10 inch large deep Dutch oven. All right, the coals are starting. So not only are we gonna try the Pioneer grates today, but we're gonna go out on a limb and we're gonna use lump charcoal to cook this. So I've always been told you only change one variable at a time. Let's see what happens, but I'm expecting great things. So the first thing that we do is we just chop up the vegetables. Uh, simple, simple recipe. All you do is you brown the hamburger with the onions, peppers, and celery. Then you toss in the rest of the ingredients and you bake it. Now, quite often, when you're making this recipe, if you use the traditional recipes that you'll find, it leaves out the mustard powder and the green hatch chilies. I find that is very sweet, especially when you're using baked beans out of a can, which already have sugar in them and the ketchup. So I like to add the mustard powder and the green chili peppers. And that just tones down the sweetness a little bit, gives it a little bit of a kick, a uh, very hearty dish. All right, at this point, we've let the uh, cast iron heat up a bit with oil in it. Remember, uh, always let the cast iron heat up before you cook, give it 10 minutes or so. Now we're just gonna brown the beef and the vegetables, break it up a little bit, chop it in there. Let that brown up while we get the beans and everything else open and ready to go. We've been going now for about 15 minutes. You can see the pink is out of the meat. So now we're just gonna add the rest of the ingredients start with the mustard powder. I'm doing two teaspoons. The Worcestershire and brown sugar. The hatch green chilies. The ever so delectable baked beans. I do believe that in 1975, I got my camp cooking merit badge with this exact recipe. I can't confirm that nor admit to its truth, but I'm gonna stick to that story. And lastly, the one cup of ketchup. And we just mix this up. Throw the lid on, throw some coals on top and let it bake for about 40 minutes. As I mentioned, I'm using a hardwood lump charcoal today, so counting briquettes is not possible. So I'm gonna put a decent head on. We've got a bit of a breeze today. And then I'll just check it and make sure it's not uh, boiling too hard here in a few minutes. And if it is, I'll take some of the coals off. It's been about eight minutes. I just wanna check this. 
make sure that we're not too hot. I don't want to burn anything in there. Oh yeah, we're bubbling away pretty good. So I think what I'll do is just take a few of the coals off the top, leave the bottom as it is. We're 35 minutes in, I'm gonna call this done. It looks great. As you can see, I have reduced the amount of coals. I think that the crazy airflow from this pit, as well as the fact that lump charcoal burns hotter, uh, I had to reduce it. You just, you didn't need so much coal. So I've just kind of managed it as I went. The bean mixture is done. It's simmering beautifully. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the heat, let it cool down for a second. Then we can dish it up and see how it tastes. Now, I come from the culinary school. Not so sure you could call it a school. It's just watching my mom. But you can never have too many onions in a dish. So we're gonna to top this with a few extra onions. And here we are, a fantastic bowl of beef and beans. You saw how easy this was to make. You saw how little refrigeration required for the ingredients. If you could have smelled this when it was cooking, ah, it was tremendous. I guarantee you it's gonna taste even better. As far as the Pioneer grates for the pop-up pit, I'm gonna give them a seven out of 10. I think they worked really well for what we did. I don't think it would be effective for anything you're trying to bake. I think it's just too hot on the bottom. It doesn't lift the uh, Dutch oven far enough from the coals. But for what we did, as long as you manage the coal count at the bottom, I think it worked great. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed. We really do appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the button. Join us for the next exciting adventure. I'm gonna dig in and see how this tastes. Mmm, very hot. This is so good, so easy. You could probably feed six people easy with this recipe. You could have it if you don't have that many people, easily scalable. I want you to try this, then I want you to let me know what you thought. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.